murder victims all died of throat wounds. Can you imagine what Thorpe is going to do if he ever finds out we dug up a grave and killed a corpse? <laughs> Books are indeed the cornerstones of learning. And I've always been proud of my collection. This particular manuscript, for example, was given to me by a college professor who occasionally visited us here at Mansfield House. Pendergast was his name, a remarkable man. I was quite upset when he passed away, and I've often wondered whether there was any truth in some of his theories. Of course, we would have heard from him by now if that were the case. You see, he believed in life after death. And this particular treatise is on the credibility of modern-day vampires. An odd theory, you're apt to say. And yet, somehow, I find it uh, provocative. I'm frightened. I don't know what to do. The spells are getting worse. I'm weaker. I know I can't go on this way. Pendergast is dead. And there's no one to help me. So I think it's time we took some action before some other poor girl is murdered. What can we do? We can set up civilian patrols, keep an eye on the campus at night, make sure there are no co-eds out alone. What about the police? They're not getting anywhere. And they have a lot of other problems. When will these patrols start? The sooner the better. Tonight. 
Now, I know you're all on a busy schedule, but there's a killer loose. Do I see any volunteers? Now, if you were any kind of friend, you would have stopped me before I volunteered. Oh, I don't know. The quad's not so bad. Cemetery, however. Want to trade, friend? <laughs> I never saw you before in my life. You know, I really think it's not such a bad idea. I grant you Houston's a little overeager, but if this patrol stops one killing, it'll be worth it. I uh, understand he's going to retire soon. You're trying to tell me something. Oh, you got to admit, if he catches the killer, he goes out in a blaze of glory. Hmm. Hi, Mr. Wells, Mr. Simmons. I... Don't hi me. When am I going to see that report on Chaucer? Would you believe next Monday? That's what you said last Monday. Trust me. <laughs> Where have I heard that before? All right, but if it's any later than Monday. Thank you, Mr. Wells. You're a doll. Why don't I get people like that in my classes? Because you're a dirty old man. That's when we need love, too. There's a cue if I ever heard one. There's Marnie. Hi. Hello, my love. Hello. Mm. Would you cool it? I know how you feel about my wife, but it's getting embarrassing. You're right. I'll have to control my natural impulses. Unnatural, I think. Oh, no. Keep it up. I love it. <laughs> you got time to come by for a drink? No, no. No, thanks. I've got a... I've got a desk full of papers waiting at the office. All right. Well, listen, good luck tonight. Thank you. You too. What's this about tonight? Oh, it's nothing. It's, uh, I'll tell you later. David's not here. Who? David. Wells. He lives here. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm Laura Benton. My folks own the house. Hi, I'm Frank Simmons. Hi. I came here on a visit, and they're away. Bad timing. <laughs> uh, this used to be my playroom. Really? Mm-hmm. I just came by out of curiosity. The door was unlocked, and I'm embarrassed. <laughs> you needn't be. I'm sure David wouldn't mind. I uh, couldn't help but notice the picture. 
Is that his wife? Was. She died a couple of years ago. They looked like they were very much in love. Yes, they were. Sometimes I think he's still getting over it. I know where he keeps the bottle. Would you like me to fix you a drink? Oh, no, thank you. I'm expecting a call from my folks. Well, since David's not here, I'll walk you down. This is Laura, I'm sorry. Benton. Uh, Laura Benton, David Wells. I caught this lady snooping around in your apartment. No, I used to live here. I was just curious, I hope you don't mind. Oh, quite all right. Well, um, good night. Good night. Beautiful girl. What you got there? Oh, uh, it's a copy of Pendergast's manuscript. Before he died, he asked me to edit it for him. Just picked it up from his housekeeper. I just stopped by to see if anything happened on your patrol. No, everything quiet. You? No, nothing. Can't say I'm too unhappy about it. I wasn't cut out to be a hero. Uh, you got time for a drink? Give me a rain check, will you? I'm a little tired tonight. Sure. See you tomorrow. Is the author's contention that there is a scientific explanation which accounts for the unnatural desire for human blood. That such a desire is in fact the biological need caused by a chemical imbalance. Therefore, the purpose of this study is to demonstrate a relationship between diseases of the blood and the body of literature concerning itself and vampires. so good last night. How are you feeling? Okay. You sure? You don't look so good right now, as a matter of fact. Been up all night working. On that uh, manuscript? Yeah. What's that about? Vampires. Wonderful. Come on. We'll be late. Then during your patrols, none of you has seen anyone suspicious. Anyone hanging around the campus. Well, I have a feeling it's going to work. We keep the patrols going, there won't be any more murders. Something I can do for you, Lieutenant? I'd uh, like to talk to your people. Anything special? Yes. Detective Lieutenant Thorpe. He's handling the murder investigation for the police. I've heard about what you're doing. And unofficially, I think it's great. Officially, it could be dangerous. You people aren't equipped or trained for these patrols. So I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to stop. We booked a suspect this morning, a boy who dated the victim. He has no alibi. We think he's probably the murderer. So you see, there's just no need for the patrols. I hope I've made my point. Thank you all for your time. Well, I guess that's that. I don't think we should let Thorpe intimidate us. The police are not infallible. What if they arrested the wrong person? We stopped the patrols, and the real murderer is still free. I wouldn't want the murder of another co-ed on my conscience, and I don't think you would either. out of me. Well, you should be scared, young lady. What's well, been going on around here? What are you doing out by yourself? Are you in the faculty patrol? <laughs> yes. You better let me walk you back to your dorm. 
But that's okay. I'm gonna go meet my boyfriend. Your boyfriend? Everything's cool, honest. Okay, but listen, keep your eyes open, will you, please? I always do. into each other. Of course, if we hadn't, I would have found some other way. Are you always so honest? Not always. I've learned to be selective. Of course, the problem with being selective is you run the risk of ending up alone. You must miss your wife very much. Oh, uh, when I was in your apartment, I saw her picture. Yes, yes, I... I do miss her. I envy you. Most people never have what you once had. Frank, what's wrong? Listen, I haven't been able to get out of my mind something you said about Pendergast and his manuscript. Tonight I was patrolling in the cemetery and I saw... Something, someone. And I, I chased him, but he disappeared. Go on. For a minute, it, it looked like... I thought it was him. Pendergast. I know he's dead. But... <laughs> you think I'm crazy, right? No. David, what are we going to do? I don't know. Look, you get some sleep. I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night. I've committed murder? I can't be sure. Frank thinks he's seeing ghosts. Poor old Pendergast. I've got to keep studying his manuscript. It's my only hope. Carefully. Wish me luck. I've given myself two weeks to find a job or else. You'll do fine. I'd better. Mr. Wells? Mr. Wells? Did you hear what happened? Fern didn't come home last night. 
and they found her body near the cemetery this morning. I just don't know what's happening, and we're all so scared. I'm sorry. Her roommate. She was a student of mine. It doesn't seem possible. stayed with her or stopped her. Frank, you can't blame yourself. Let me make sure I understand this. You think you saw Pendergast, the old professor who died? Look, I don't know. It was dark. I can't be sure. What makes you think it was him? It was something David said. He was writing a book. I remember somebody joking about it, uh, something about blood diseases. Well, there's more to it than that. Well, go on. It was about blood diseases and vampires. Don't say anything about this to anyone. Not yet. What about Lieutenant Thorpe? He'd laugh you out of the office. You didn't. Either you saw something you thought was Pendergast, or when you get to be my age, you begin to believe in the possibilities of a lot of things. All right, there's something else. The girls all bled to death. No indication of a weapon. And the only marks on them were on the throat. It was a nice night, and I wanted to be with you. Come on, you know it's not safe. That's why we're still patrolling. David, I'm not asking anything of you. I know you're still getting over your wife's death. I guess some people take longer to heal than others. I understand. I'm... I'm just content to be with you. It's not just my wife, Laura. I, I guess, I guess I've always been shy with, with people I really care about. Thank you for telling me. <sighs> Strange place for a conversation like this. teacher, a professor of medicine. He was a kind, gentle old man. Wells! I'm sorry if I startled you. You all right? Uh, Miss Benton, Chief Houston. 
How do you do? Why don't you two run along? I'll take over the last watch. Thanks. Good night. Good night. I can't believe that I've become something, something monstrous. If Pendergast's theory is sound, there's no hope for me. I wish I could die. My mind wants to die, but my body's determination to survive is too strong. Talk, Owen. Sure, want a drink? No, thanks. What do you know about these murders? I thought you had a suspect. Yeah, we had to let him go. He didn't date the second girl. Last night, when Dana Evans was murdered, he had the best alibi imaginable. He was in jail. Too bad. It's possible you eased up on your investigation because you had a suspect. I didn't. Look, why don't we work together? In spite of your patrols, there's been two more murders. Now, tell me what really happened last night. I read your report. It uh, was a little sketchy, wasn't it? The only thing sketchy around here is the police protection on this campus. Why are we always at each other's throats? <laughs> Did I say something funny? The girls, the murder victims, all died of throat wounds. Well, I know that. And you know I know it. No sign of a murder weapon. Did you ever ask yourself who'd do such a thing? I'm not. Maybe. You got another theory? A vampire. Maybe I'll have that drink.
there's a professor here. A man named Pendergast. I knew him slightly before he died. Kept to himself. Took long walks. Lonely man. Every time I ever bumped into him, he had his nose in a book. I saw him last night. You saw him? I shot at him. And I suppose the bullets went right through him. Sure looked like that. You could have missed. I'm a pretty good shot. Has anyone else seen him? This Pendergast? Why? Would you believe someone else? If you don't believe me, I can see it in your eyes. Owen, I'm just a simple cop. Vampires are a whole other trip. What are you smiling about? You're a wonder, that's all. I ask you out to dinner and end up having the best meal of my life in my own apartment. That's my bag. I cook. You can't imagine the broken hearts I've left behind with my veal piccata. I can imagine. Let it go. Hello. Yeah, Frank. Well, uh, I can't get away. You just... Yeah, I'm listening. Uh, I'll be right over. Problems? I'm terribly sorry. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave. What's this all about? We have to dig up that grave and make sure that Pendergast is in it. Come on. Is he kidding? Come on. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What, what uh, what's that thing for? It's the only one sure way to kill a vampire. Come on, let's go over. a couple of beautiful red-blooded girls. Picture spread fit for kings, and you two haven't said a word all afternoon. Uh, we're just relaxed and stuffed. Yeah, it was a great meal. Oh, <laughs> good try, but your heart's not in it. What is it, Frank? You've been acting awfully strange lately. Well, if you must know, I... I think I'm falling in love. <laughs> Again? Hmm. <laughs> I know what it is. It's the murders, isn't it? You both knew the girls. All of them. Ugh, it must be awful for you. Mr. Wells, Mr. Simmons, I'm sorry to butt in. Well, that's all right, Lieutenant. This is my wife, Marnie, Lieutenant Thorpe. Mrs. Simmons. Laura Benton, Lieutenant Thorpe. Miss Benton, I was wondering if I could have a word with both of you. Of course. Excuse me, honey. Now, Houston tells me you think you saw a dead man named Pendergast. Is that true? Look, Lieutenant. Well, is it true? Yes, it's true. OK. Lord knows why, but I did some checking on Pendergast. 
There's nothing about the man that would suggest even the slightest thing out of the ordinary. He was straight as an arrow. But during my investigation, I've uh, come up with a little theory. Wouldn't it be clever for the real murderer to have used the imaginary vampire to throw suspicion away from himself? The real murderer? Who? Houston. Houston? Why Houston? Some years ago, before he came here, a cohort of another campus accused him of assault. The charge was dropped when she refused to testify. Then how, in the name of heaven, did he ever get a job here? Well, he's clean. He's got no record. I found it out uh, unofficially. Oh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention anything. Look, take my advice. Don't get caught up in Houston's madness. Or you both could be in more trouble than you ever imagined. I'll take care of him. Look, Houston must be crazy to have suggested what we did last night in the cemetery, and we're crazy to have gone along with it. Can you imagine what Thorpe is going to do if he ever finds out we dug up a grave and killed a corpse? Using Pendergast was one thing. He's dead. But I can't let them suspect Houston. He's old, foolish, but... I'm so afraid. I've been thinking about Laura. I'm afraid to love her. Did I kill again? I loved her. David! Oh, my God, what happened? I don't know. I just found her out there. Put it here. Oh. You, what happened? What happened? What happened? Oh, David. Oh, I was coming up here, and someone, someone grabbed me, and I screamed, and I... It's like fainted. It's all right, it's all right. Oh. Oh, David, I've never been so afraid. Operator, give me the police. Just black, please. drew a blank. Not one lead. I questioned Houston. Said it was at the movies. Alone. I can't, I can't believe it was Houston. You don't really think it's Pendergast, do you? Considering his checkered career, I'd say Houston's our man. No, and I've got to keep a very close eye on him.
I thought you were going to jump out of the stands and attack that poor referee. Poor referee, my eye. He blew the game for us. What happened to that nice ladylike demeanor? That was just a front. Now you've seen the real me. <laughs> Thank you for helping me laugh again. I like the real you. Have I told you? I'm glad we're progressing. Do um, you have a dark side that you keep hidden? Not me. What you see is what you get. Nobody's perfect. It'll just be a minute. I've got to pick up some papers to the office. Lock the door behind me. I was making my rounds. I heard a scream. There were footsteps. I chased them. Fired. David? It all happened so fast. I called out to him. He never answered. I didn't know it was him. Keys in my pocket. Take it. Promise me. Diary in my desk. Personal. Burn it. Please. Promise. I will. I promise.
still can't believe he's gone. Laura, how are you feeling? Uh, can I uh, fix you a drink? Hmm? Oh, oh, no, I'm all right, thank you. What time is it? 4.30. The train doesn't leave till 6. Laura, are you sure this is best for you? I'm... David had no one. Except me. He told me his wife was buried in Des Moines. I feel I should be with him on the train. I want to be with him. We had so little time together. But Laura, why don't you uh, go and get some rest? We can finish up here, close up the apartment. I think I will. Fine writer, Pendergast. Nice style. Too bad he didn't live to publish that. But you know, perhaps there's more to his theory than one might imagine. At least he's persuaded me to have an open mind on the subject. And that's what education is all about, don't you agree? An open mind. It's what made Pendergast such a unique individual. He could make you believe in the possibility of anything. Oh, and now here are some scenes from our next adventure on Ghost Story. <laughs> when people keep hallucinating, they end up in asylums. Do you want to end up in an asylum? No! Like your mother, I'm not like her. I'm not, I'm not! Nobody wants to do this, a crazy old woman. You're not crazy. <laughs> 